Can anyone confirm? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Uh, hi. So my name is Sachin Panikar. I'll be a quiz master today. Uh, today we are here. The B. R. M. G. Ambedkar, and we have a quiz on this occasion. It's uh, 14 questions that I have selected, and the quiz is not a formal quiz. It's an open quiz. So what I want is, if you know the answer, please. Please type it in the chat box, and and I'll and I'll read out the person's name as uh, the first person's name on my screen. Okay, uh, so let's directly go to the quiz. Uh, the first question I'll read it out. Next slide, please. Okay, so here in this in this slide you can see uh, it's it's a book written by Akash Singh Rathod. It's Ambedkar's dash. So there's a word over there which I've blanked out. uh it's a secret history of the constitution of india i want you to tell me what is that what is the next word ambedkar's dash so what is the next word and shwetang naik says preamble indeed it is preamble preamble is the correct answer good one shwetang so so the the name the book of the name is ambedkar's preamble uh the next question okay here we see uh, it's a it's a personality so you have to identify this personality he was the former rajya sabha mem member of rajya sabha as well as lok sabha and is associated with parties like vanchit bahujan agadi republican party of india and baripa bahujan mahajan so these are three political parties he is associated with and he is is he is very famous and yugang naik says prakash ambedkar that is indeed the correct answer good answer over there he is the grandson of dr b r ambedkar good going everyone next question next slide okay so this is a the, the picture you can see the resting place of dr b r ambedkar you just have to tell me what is it called so every many people have that right you have rajgarh you have Shak, shakti stal same way okay so we again have shwetang naik get, getting it right it is it indeed is chaitya bhumi good one over there next slide The next question is: In which year was Dr. B. R. Ambedkar awarded the Bharat Ratna? So I'm looking for a year. Any guesses over there? Okay, lot of guesses now. Uh, I saw the first name. Uh, I'll give it to Raj as well as Yugang. Raj put it as a question mark, and Yugang confidently says it. It indeed is 1990, a bit late, but nevertheless, the great leader got the Bharat Ratna in the year 1990. Uh, great efforts by everyone over there: Yugang, Joan, Priya, Shweta, and Kavita. It's it, it in, indeed is 1990. Next slide. Okay, so this is a book, the Doctor and the Saint. You have to tell me who is the author of this book, and the person has also written several other other books like Azadi and Listening to Grasshoppers and several others. So you have to tell me who is this award-winning author. Shwetang doesn't wait for anything; he goes for it. It's it indeed is Arundhati Roy, the famous Man Booker Prize winner. Good one over there, Shwetang. next slide now in india we celebrate a uh, social empowerment day you have to tell me when do we celebrate it and why did we choose this particular date so i need a date and the reason why we chose the uh, that the particular date
Shwetang again goes for it. It's indeed is March 20th. And it was on this day in 1927, we had the Mahat Satyagraha. And that's the reason why we celebrate it today as a social empowerment day. On a roll. Sandoshi Naik, you get it right too. Good one. Next slide. Okay, here in this picture, if you can look, uh, if you can see, you can just zoom it. You will see uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar and this little girl. Now, this is a, it's a symbolic, uh, a symbolic picture. Uh, it means something else over here. It's not a direct reference over here. You can see someone throwing two two ladies over there throwing to uh, throwing something, and uh, I have blanked out her skirt basically. It was the frog basically, and the lower part I have uh, blanked out because there's something written over there. Okay, and this picture is said to be inspired by Hitler because even he had somewhat similar picture. No, not exactly, but somewhat. Um, now, now this picture, you have to tell me what does it symbolize or what is this whole idea behind this picture? Or I'll give you, I'll give a hint over here. Is that it's, there's something written on this girl's dress? So I, I'm looking for something. And answers pouring in. Shwetang says it's a Hindu code bill. And I was looking for the Hindu code bill. That's the right answer. So on a skirt, it, it's written Hindu code bill. So uh, this picture, it basically means that Ambedkar is carrying this girl with Hindu code bill. And there are people who are trying to stop that. Uh, and and there are women who are trying to you know, stop the person doing from doing that. Kavita Prajavad, yes, that, that is the Hindu code bill. Good answer over there both of you. Uh, next slide. Yes, Sandoshi Naik. That is in the code bill. So here, uh, Ambedkar is referring to something. And uh, I'll read it out. If I was asked to name any particular article in this as the most important un article without which the constitution would be a nullity, I would not refer to any other article except this one. It is the very soul of the constitution and the heart of it. Which article is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar referring to? It's a very famous client teacher. And Samrudhi Rao doesn't wait for it. She directly goes for it. It's it's Article 32, Sai Bhatte as well as Samrudhi Rao. Both of them go for Article 32. And Article 32, it is good answer by both of them. It's it's right to constitutional remedies. Kavita Prajapat also gets it. Sandarshi Naik too. It is indeed Article 32, which gives you right to go to the Supreme Court to enforce your writ. Uh, in a right jurisdiction. That is the right answer. Article 32 was what I was looking for. Next slide. Okay, so in this picture, what's happening is uh, this is uh, Rajnikanth's film Kala, and there's a number plate over there which has which I've blanked out. And this this number plate has something to do with Dr. Ambedkar. You know, so so I'm looking for this number because it's very relevant. Uh, of course, the the filmmakers, uh, for some reason, they said it's not related. But if you know the number, then it's it's very much related to Dr. Ambedkar. So I'm looking for this number. says it's BR 1956. Sandoshi Naik says MHBR 1956. Anyone wants to Im improvise the answer a little bit more? It, it's almost there, I feel. And John gets it, the exact thing that I was looking for. Okay, Shwetang also gets it. Both of them, all of them get, get it right. I was looking for 1956 actually, but they all complete it. It's MH01BR 1956. And very surprisingly, they say that it's not related to BR Ambedkar. Very, very uh, it's so obvious over there. Uh, so that that was the answer I was looking for. Great answer, all of you all. That was a tricky one, but you all got it right. Uh, next uh, next question. So there's this commission called Hilton Young Commission. And before which the Ambedkar deposed. So he gave some reports over there. And you have to tell me what was established by this. Shwetang doesn't wait for me to complete the question. He goes for it. It's he says it's the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, and that indeed is the correct answer. It's Hilton Young Commission, which later on submitted its report and it uh, gave the report, and after which it was finally established. Uh, the the RBI was established after it. So B R Ambedkar has done a lot more than uh, constitution. He has also uh, done economics. Uh, 
he has done a lot of work in economics uh, as well as in in the field of labor law uh, i would also request people not to raise their hand rather just type out the the answer so so that was the answer i was looking for rbi next question okay so in this picture if you just zoom in you will see two 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 personalities over there on the right is a uh, a vice president uh, shri venkaiya naidu on the left is a uh, rajiv mehrishi mr rajiv mehrishi so at that time rajiv mehrishi was holding a particular post and dr ambedkar once said that this is the most important officer in the constitution of india so what post was dr uh, sorry was uh, mr rajiv mehrishi holding what what, what is the post that is he holding and shwetang again goes for it and he again gets it right it indeed is the comptroller and the auditor general of india it comes in article 148 of the constitution and that's the correct answer so this is a picture of them inaugurating the statue of dr b r ambedkar at the cag please you know the the headquarters over there uh next question so here that here we have uh dr ambedkar saying something in the rajya sabha on 2nd september 1953 so he says but i'm quite prepared to say that i shall be the first person to do something i do not want it it does not suit anybody but whatever that may be if our people want to carry on they must not forget that there are majorities and there are minorities and they simply cannot ignore the minorities by saying oh no to recognize you is to harm democracy i should say that the greatest harm will come by injuring the minorities what is x so x is basically he say that i will do something so what was dr ambedkar saying that what what, what am i what will i do so here he says i shall be the first person to do something so i want you to tell me what is the thing that he was telling that he might do Shwetang says he wanted to burn the constitution, and indeed that is the right answer. He actually he might actually burn the constitution itself. So I included this question because he was you know the disenchanted with the constitution, the way it was not not so much with the constitution but the way it was functioning. So that's why the draftsman of constitution said that he might actually burn it. So burning of the constitution is what I was looking for. Good answer. Next question. Okay, in this picture, what, what can you can see two set of people over there. In the middle, you have uh, Pandit Nehru. So on the one side, uh, that is to Nehru's left. As uh, from our from our perspective, from uh, to our left, it's it's the cabinet of the first the first government's cabinet, uh, and to the right is the Congress party. So you can see over there, Dr. B R Ambedkar, John Matai, uh, Ayengar, and there's there's S V Mukherjee and others over there, and they are basically doing something over there. and uh, nehru is somehow trying to you know mediate over there and he actually come to a solution this way. what is this issue we are talking about and i guess the picture gives an idea about what the issue is over here it it is <laughs> the, the the picture got slightly Moved somewhere, and then if you, if you look at it properly, the issue is the the two songs basically. You have Janagana Manav one side saying, the other side saying Bande Mataram. So it's Nehru who said that you know let's 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 have a solution. Let's have national anthem and national songs. So you have the two sides for both the thing to be adopted as a national song or something. So then it it, it they came to a solution that it should have national anthem and it should have national song. So this was the issue over there, a giveaway, I would say. But good one over there. Next slide. And last question for today's quiz. It's Ambedkar's teacher in his primary school in Satara was Mr. X. He was a very kind teacher who provided him with lunch, you know, a daily lunch. And as otherwise, Ambedkar had to walk the long distance back to his home. For his lunch, so he had to walk all the way. So he provided him lunch. It was in his horn 
it was in his honor that something was done by Ambedkar's family. What did they do? Or identify the person. It's, so it's the same thing that I'm looking for. So what did they, what did this, what did they do? Shwetang says the person's surname was Ambedkar. So what did they, what did they do over there? Are, um, people are giving a better answer with the Krishna Ji Ambedkar. So what did they do? Okay, can, can someone tell me what did they do? He gave his surname to Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. And that's a good answer over there by Priya Samruddhi as well as uh, Shwetank give the surname. So the person's name was, it was Ambedkar. So Ambedkar's real surname was Sankpal. Then they changed to the place belief that they came from. So it was Amba Vadekar. And then finally, Ambedkar, his, his sir's name was Ambedkar. And in his honor, Ambedkar's family changed their surname to, from Amba Vadekar, they re-changed it to Ambedkar. And, and I, I, this is the last question of this round. So I just end by saying that the teacher was to bring out the whole issue that we have is about the caste over here. And his teacher was from an upper caste family and it, and his teacher was a kind person. So maybe we, we should probably remember that it's, it's, we should probably take an inspiration from the person and probably treat properly people, other people properly. And uh, if you can go to the last slide over there. And I will just end my quiz with this quote. I could have taken so many, but this is the best one I feel because uh, America once said, over regard for leaders sap self-confidence of the masses, leaves them helpless when left leaderless in a, in hour of trail or when led by unscrupulous leaders. And I say this because, because I see many people sort of worshipping Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, but I guess the greatest service that we can do to him is probably by following his ideals and, and you know, just fulfilling his dreams of a country run by constitution and by and its principles. Thank you, everyone. It is a great quiz. Thank you to the professors and to the center for calling me over here. Thank you. Thank you, Swet. Uh, thank you, Sachin, for such a captivating quiz which also, uh, you know, wonderful participation from many of the audiences. And uh, Swetang has definitely dominated this quiz. So thank you for that, Sachin, and congratulate you on this. Uh, once again, I, I would uh, request Ms. Bar to please introduce our guest speaker. Ms. Ba, are you here? Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. You can introduce. Yes, ma'am. So we have among us Assistant Professor of PESS RSN College of Arts and Science, Parmagodi Ponda, ma'am Gautami Amonkar, who will be discussing on how Dr. Ambedkar spearheaded a movement for empowerment of Dalit and brought their issues in the mainstream political discourse. She is a MA in political science as well as a PhD scholar at Goa University. Handing over to you, Gautami, ma'am, you may take over. So much for such a wonderful introduction and thank you so much to Vim Salgaukar and the team for uh, actually uh, inviting me and uh, making me present. I'm a young uh, research uh, scholar. I'm trying my level best and I'll try to present this uh, topic very best. Uh, this is one of the very uh, topic with a score to my heart and uh, yes. So Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, a pioneer of Dalit empowerment. So uh, when we talk about Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, what comes to my mind is about uh, his uh, his leadership quality. What comes to my mind is about his 
intellectual ability his uh, scholastic ability is a indian jurist economist politician social reformer a principal architect of indian constitution which is uh, something very great and also who have inspired the lit uh, sorry buddhist movement and against social discrimination and who have actually fought for the rights of all those downtrodden people and uh, who worked for their rights as such so while introducing about uh, the topic so let me begin the indian social structure a social history is full of practices and ideas of social discrimination deprivation and marginalization so what does that mean while uh, by uh, when i say that it is full of uh, discrimination deprivation and marginalization so very thought that comes to my mind is about the caste system that exists in the society so the caste system is actually detrimental to the societal system and if you see and if you go behind the history so india and west if you compare so we have a caste system there is class system and of course in a way they have a quite close linking to each other as such so when i speak about the caste system in india what comes to my mind is the four varna system the varna and the social hierarchy that is of brahmins vaishya shudra uh, brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudra so in this varna system which is mentioned in our uh, scriptures our uh, indian uh, religious scriptures there is no mention about the outcasts which was mentioned in a later period and they were termed as either chandals ati shudras what else is and what not etc So these are the names and these are the titles which is so in a way if you then this entire system is uh, uh, showing us this reality and it uh, tells us about it tells us about the discriminatory nature that uh, that society that Indian society has shown. So this is a uh, one part of it. it is also replaced with the examples of sincere efforts for social inclusion and egalitarian reform when we say about this egalitarian reform so i would like to take up some movements like bhakti movement periyar who started with a uh, uh, self respect movement jyotiba phule who started with satyashodak samaj vivekanand gandhi ambedkar and some uh, many other examples we can see as well. so every Uh, movements and every idea have every thinker had something to say about it. But Dr. B. R. Ambedkar holds the distinct position among all because of his efforts for the empowerment of all those who are deprived and marginalized. So the moment when we hear the word downtrodden, the moment when we hear the word uh, uh, you know marginalized, the moment when we come across all such kind of unjust or uh, the issue. which are discriminatory in nature which somewhere down the lines hamper certain sections of the society the only name that comes to the mind is of ambedkar so uh, the next slide uh, here i am trying to bring out empowerment and social amelioration so i just want to place some nuances between uh, the both concepts that is empowerment and social amelioration so empowerment aims at enhancing capacities of deprived social groups so that it gains control of all those conditions which affects its life situations and dependent on the con uh, sorry uh, situations and which becomes an agent of social change secondly when we speak about the social reforms social reforms and ameliorations are like external aids which are dependent on the conscience and good sense of society so in other words deprived community is the subject of change under the empowerment approach whereas it is the object of change in the social reform approach dr b r ambedkar uh, in doing so okay uh, who is said to be a pioneer of dalit empowerment in india and is one of the uh, uh, meaning uh, the great personality he in doing so has emphasized on the people's consciousness 
and gave importance to people's consciousness. Of course, this uh, people's consciousness is the idea that we can even see in the marks of thought as such. Uh, but yes, uh, consciousness is something even uh, is been uh, taken by Ambedkar in his uh, thoughts and different speeches. So coming to the next slide, that is, what is exactly this Dalit empowerment? So Dalit empowerment is the process of gaining uh, control by Dalits as a community over self ideology, which determine the power relationship in a society. Thus, the concept of empowerment is essentially a political process which challenges the prevailing power structure of subordination. Now, uh, when I speak about this uh, process of empowerment, basically this is of a recent origin when we are highlighting on the process of empowerment. So basically when we speak about this process, there are basically four steps. So this is uh, conscious, they are consciousness, first of all, then comes the mobilization, thirdly, organization, and fourthly, uh, it is about control. So these are the four steps as per the empowerment process. So when I speak about the consciousness, it means about awareness, the knowledge, creation of awareness, knowledge of group identity and group interest. This is one of the very significant, uh, you know, uh, characteristic feature of every, uh, or I would say that was highlighted by Ambedkar. So one has to be conscious about his identity. One has to know that this is wrong, that is slavery. So once you remember about that identity, your self-identity, then you will be able to actually ask, demand for the rights that you actually, as a human as a human, you all already have as such. So consciousness was something which was uh, emphasized by Ambedkar. And uh, there's one this very famous slogan which I've just put on the screen that is educate, organize, and agitate. So educate is nothing but a consciousness which uh, he's speaking about. The consciousness to be created, uh, you know, a consciousness that to be created in all the uh, minds of the people has to be just like a social construct and has to be aware that we are a human being and we are not a slave. So that consciousness will come when you are educated. So education was something which he has emphasized and gave a more importance and he gave a call to all Dalit and downtrodden that education should be your first priority. So education and mobilization, meaning we can link this education to the second concept of mobilization also. Uh, so mobilization, it means nothing but generating desire and willingness. Thirdly, organization, which means to come collectively to achieve a common goal. And fourthly, when we speak about the control, which means acquiring the power and capacity to be able to decide and determine those matters which affect one's life condition. So uh, this point we have, I mean, uh, we can compare it with the, you know, the slogan which uh, uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar has given about uh, educate, meaning uh, to the people that is educate, organize, and educate. So educate, we can link with the mobilization and consciousness. Organization and education can be linked to the other two, uh, you know, the steps, the process, the steps that are part of this empowerment process. So uh, educating uh, or the uh, educating deprived classes means in a very uh, way consciousness and mobilization organize and agitations are equal to active organization of Dalits for gaining control over their life condition. So within this perspective, Ambedkar provides a significant foundation and by emphasizing on the important principle of liberty, equality and fraternity, he creates a phase of a transformation and in a way he uh, is actually giving a way to create an egalitarian society. Uh, next slide, that is, uh, who are the lit? Basically, uh, yes, you might feel like uh, why this uh, uh, thing is coming or why, who are the lit? Because we are aware of all, uh, all are aware of who are the lit and what is what. But I feel that it is very important to tell who are the lit. The term Dalit is actually a Marathi term, which uh, actually means uh, ground or broken pieces. 
so if uh, i tell you about uh, uh, the term the person who actually used this word was uh, jyoti bakule again who is one of a great social reformer who started women's education who spoke in favor of the uh, all the down children community and for their rights so he actually brought this term dalit to actually relate with all those down children uh, people as such thus uh, the concept uh, sorry this term was popularized later by uh, dr b r ambedkar of course and uh, of course it was later popularized by dalit panthers and uh, in maharashtra this is specifically referred to as uh, to dalit uh, to a specific community that is scheduled caste community however the term broadly refers to any oppressed group of the people so basically dalit we try to relate it to scheduled caste uh since this uh, particular word is like popular got popularity in uh, maharashtra it is largely you know always we try to relate it with maharashtra but broadly speaking it relates it is bringing or it is about all those down trodden sections of society all those people who are deprived can be said to be as dalit so dalit is a uh, especially used to the section of the society that is scheduled caste section of the society because they are placed at the lowest end of the social system and suffer various forms of deprivation and social political economic and cultural mar marginalization so as i have already discussed with you all about the varna system and the position so they are said as tandals and uh, tandals ati shudras etc so this in a way what happens is that uh, this 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 term actually uh, sometimes becomes uh, very negative and uh, so certain people take it in a wrong manner but the worst for this or i would uh, go ahead with the uh, point and i would like to say that the worst for uh, this kind of thing is the untouchability which functions like the deprivation syndrome i'm purposely using this uh, term deprivation syndrome uh so basically segregation of dalits in the community then there are different things like ambedkar remarked that untouchable uh, forms of deprivation and exclusion which include segregation of dalits ban on temple entry and other public places the exploitation for generation as bonded labor etc so dear uh, all students and respected teachers i would like to mention over here that when even today uh, uh in our do we can see this kind of incidents do happen in the country now when we are saying that uh, uh, we are the people or uh, when we say that we are living in a democratic country we have our own constitution and constitution has guaranteed us certain rights abolition of untouchability article 17 of the indian constitution has emphasized that this is strictly prohibited but still this practice do exist in the society we can say this in the northern area we can say this uh, in goa also in state like goa wherein we see goa in more progressive terms as a progressive state but still i would say that there are certain villages rural villages wherein this practices of uh, ban on the temple entry this kind of a segregation do exist okay so ambedkar remarked that untouchability is not the simple matter but mother of all poverty and it has brought us to the abject state we are today ambedkar always highlighted on this segregation which has its root in the religious texts and scriptures and therefore he was always critical of the same now uh, this is again very interesting point i would like to say why interesting because uh, nowadays uh, we have seen that uh, there is a conspiracy actually of hijacking the ideas of ambedkar what ambedkar actually had said over a past period of time is now actually getting uh, you know it is uh, getting distorted day by day so like he was very critical to dharmashram varnashram because uh, he mentioned very strictly in the annihilation of the caste wherein this dharmashram varnashram was the were, were the main uh, reason responsible uh, this was the reason why we could uh, you know why the the position of dalits or why the untouchables has got this kind of a position and in fact no position as such but still somewhere down the line we could say that it has been praised 
basically saffronization of ambedkar do happen so ambedkar who was a very critic of manusmriti is now praised and uh, it is uh, manusmriti is also you know compared with that of bhima uh, indian constitution as it is said to be as a bhima smriti bhima smriti which is uh, actually very incorrect and i would say if both the things are brought in one uh, and then we cannot compare both at all because uh, when we speak, uh, say about the indian constitution indian constitution is filled with all the moral philosophical principles liberty equality fraternity on all those principles which are actually humanitarian in the sense it is actually giving rights to every individual in the society the humans in the society whereas when we see about manusmriti which is a religious te- text which might to make me very uh, critical this thing but then yes of course it's very uh, correct and i have to say as a, a researcher that this uh, manusmriti was very much uh, discriminatory uh, it was it is it didn't give a uh, uh, it didn't give a due chance to each and every section of the society so now i'll go to another slide that is a brief history of untouchables so when i speak about this uh, ambedkar hail from a poor family belonging to uh, one of the hindu untouchable mahar community in india so if i speak about the mahar community so of all the untouchable community uh, it is uh, untouchable community in the fold of hindu society the mahas are said to be as the most robust adaptable intelligent fighting brave and leading community as such keenly sensitive to their inferior position they are conscious of their slavery it is held by some that the mahas were the original inhabitants of the maharashtra which they say was uh because that's how it is related uh, to the larger this thing and so we have the title as mahar uh, maharashtra so this is uh, one idea this is one approach that is uh, you know actually can be related to this uh, community as such so then further untouchable comprise a number of distinct groups which form the lower strata of hindu society and were condemned by the caste hindu centuries unto and untouchables had different names in different parts of the country so like uh, they were some of the names which i have already mentioned so untouchables outcast pallas panchamas atyajas namashudras atishudras avarnas so their social disabilities were uh, specific and severe and numerous their touch shadow and even voice were deemed by the caste hindus to be polluting so they had to clear the way at the approach of the caste hindu they were forbidden to keep certain domestic animal to use uh, certain metals for ornaments were uh, obliged to wear a particular type of dress to eat particular type of food to use a particular type of footwear so this is how uh, uh, meaning this whether uh, uh, titles these are the things uh, that were actually associated with this uh, community that is sadi further going to the ideological framework which is relevant to the process of dalit empowerment firstly ambedkar was convinced that the caste system and its base are not only repressive in nature uh, it is a uh, it is uh, not only repressive in nature but they systematically deny the principles of liberty equality and fraternity and therefore it is uh, something which is very dangerous to the national unity so um second point which i would like to highlight on uh so uh, second point uh, before that i would like to say that uh, in the first point they generate and sustain a fragmented society which is uh, dangerous to the national unity and integration of the state secondly the caste system is deep rooted and well entrenched and sanctioned by feminical religion that any amount of reform will uh, not end the plight of dalit here uh, he deferred with gandhi the only viable solution lies in the complete annihilation of the caste system or to move away from the uh, fold of hinduism finally he failed to achieve this uh, the first one and hence he opted for the second and he uh, gave a call to his people to uh, you know uh, uh, 
con get converted to Buddhism, the religion which is actually speaking about Samatha, Pradnya, Bandhuta, and uh, also Karuna, Shin, and all this, uh, you know, ideas, which is actually telling us about, uh, uh, you know, when we speak about the Bandhuta, Brotherhood, when we speak about Samatha, it is uh, equality, when we speak about Karuna, it is like having, as a human being, everybody should be treated as you. So the second option was felt very best for Ambedkar. Ambedkar thought that Buddhism has all those principles and uh, thus that is the reason to get converted to Buddhism, which was actually, uh, uh, which was actually telling us or uh, uh, giving us a path towards the peace. So in a way, some Ambedkarites also say that uh, even in the Indian constitution, we have certain principles. Of course, it is said to be as a borrowed constitution, has uh, taken some principles from different constitutions. But at the same time, certain principles also comes from the Buddhist thought and Buddhist uh, uh, principles. And thus, uh, there is a very deep root connection or deep rooted connection with the uh, Buddhism and also our Indian constitution. Thirdly, the parliamentary uh, the parliamentary form of government. Okay. Parliamentary form of democracy is the best form of the government, uh, which he said as such. Uh, but political democracy cannot succeed without the realization of social and economic equality. Therefore, he was a chief exponent of social democracy. So uh, when uh, there was a clash between uh, Tilak and uh, when there was a clash between Tilak and uh, Ambedkar, Ambedkar always uh, was in support of social democracy and not the political democracy. Because political democracy would have given a Swaraj, but it wouldn't have given a social freedom to uh, people, all those sections of the society, because uh, the politics is actually, you know, uh, politics is actually dominated by certain few. So I would like to quote one statement which he has mentioned in any nation of the caste. The root of untouchability is the caste system. The root of the caste system is the religion attached to Varna and Ashrama. And the root of Varna Ashrama is the manical religion and the root of the manical religion is the polytheism or the political power. So I think uh, this point actually uh, tells what I actually uh, wanted to discuss about it. So social freedom and political freedom, uh, it was always a social freedom that was uh, given priority by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Then, fourthly, uh, the process of social change involves four elements. Internal change, that is slave rejection of slavery, social struggle, political dialogue, and political organizing. Without access to political power, the social change cannot reach to its logical conclusion. The inclusion of political elements in the process of social change is the most singular contribution of Ambedkar to the, uh, to the process of Dalit empowerment in India. So in order to keep the process of social change in the right track, he was convinced that leadership of such change should be in the hands of Dalit only. And lastly, he also advocated self-respect and education among Dalits for their internal transformation. State socialism for economic change, formation of political groups for political changes, and espousal of Buddhism for cultural regeneration of Dalit community. So when we speak about some of the important work of uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, so any nation of caste who were Shudras, the untouchable, uh, Buddha and Dhamma are some of the particular one and very notable one as such. Any nation of the caste is something which is very uh, famous and uh, already I have said the statement which is uh, mentioned here and in relation of the, in uh, this book, in relation of the caste. There are certain uh, movements that was carried by uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, like Mahar Satyagra, which was one of the very popular ones, Temple Entry Movement, 1930, which was carried out, effort to reform the Mahar Vachan system. But all those movements were failure for the very reason. I mean, of course, movements were successful, but the efforts for, why, uh, for the reason, for the very reason why those movements were conducted were not achieved. 
so actual uh, uh, in a real manner if you see there was no place given to this community and uh, nobody accepted the community uh, the dalit and because of this uh, there was no other option than getting converted to buddhism as such there are certain other uh, works like that of bahishrit uh, hitakari like Vahishrit Hitakarini Sabha and All India Depressed Classes Association, which was in 1930. The reason for all this organization was nothing but to generate self-respect of Dalits. Then he also started with newspapers like Mukhinayak, Bahishrit Bharat, then Janata. So this newspapers are very popular as such. Then he also founded Independent Labour Party in the year 1937. All India Scheduled Caste Federation, Republican Party of India. So these were some of the idea, some of the uh, important, remarkable works that we can uh, uh, always, you know, relate with. So a relevance of Ambedkar. So it continues to remain as a source of inspiration for Indian Constitution, the law and governance, politics of reservation, freedom of press, social democracy. So. Uh, definitely, even if anybody says that, no, of course, it is not, uh, it is not uh, relevant today because I have, I got many students asking me questions that uh, this has to be meaning there is no untouchability, there is no kind of such uh, discrimination that do exist in the society. But then uh, somewhere down the line, we have to understand the root reality. So even today, even today, when we can get the cases like that of Rohit Femula committing suicide because of such kind of discrimination, uh, when we can uh, see uh, the incidents like of lynching, beating, beating, all these incidents actually tells us that it do exist, it do prevails in the society, in the modern society, so-called as modern society. So we say uh, Ambedkar as a modern thinker, modern, uh, uh, you know, uh, modern intellectual thinker, but still his ideas never have come into the practice, into the reality, we can see. But now, uh, People try to interpret Ambedkar the way they want as such. So everybody want uh, to take Ambedkar and uh, to, you know, give uh, their own sense when it comes to his ideas. But then somewhere down the line, uh, what actually he meant and what was the reason, what was the purpose behind getting all those things still remains, uh, you know, it is uh, a question to the uh, society, I would say. Ambedkar's ideas has become philosophy of Dalits, including essays, essays, and OBCs. So this is like a very obvious thing. Like all the down children as the people who find uh, some kind of, you know, they are, uh, they get some kind of a space in uh, Ambedkar and the group for the very present uh, because uh, the philosophy which Ambedkar is, has given is not sectarian. It's not uh, something that will hamper the society, but it is uh, something that will bring society together. The aim and ambition is to uh, you know, bring or uh, create an egalitarian society. So we have SCSTs and OBCs coming today. Even in Goa, it's very good to see that we have organizations like Fule Shahu Ambedkar and we're in this SCSTs, OBCs, uh, you know, coming together, discussing on the Ambedkar views, ideas, and actually working for the downtrodden and all the sections of the society and for their welfare as such. There are a large number of universities, colleges and NGOs which are working for Ambedkarite movement. So, so in a way, he becomes very relevant in all this idea. And Ambedkar is relevant to all the underprivileged sections of the society, uh, in fact, who are suppressed, maybe women's or any underprivileged section, subordinate section, uh, who are, uh, you know, given a very secondary position get space in this moment but of course uh, there's a big question that how far the things are taken and Ambedkar uh, meaning uh, it, it, it is a need of an art to understand a proper vision and idea of Ambedkar and his thought as such so in the conclusion I would like to say that Dr. B. R. Ambedkar represented in the national sense a profound um, uh, side of the socio-political struggle which formed an irrepressible part of the nationalist movement. His lifelong concern with religion, morality and justice in the idealistic sense was marked by a restlessly serious attempt to get the intellectual, social and political
He did not believe in the class analysis, but intuitively and intellectually grasped the link between the caste and class. So both are different, but both can be related as such. And uh, uh, I would like at this uh, uh, point, I would like to make uh, one small uh, uh, readings, uh, um, a point that uh, that the recent period of social political development in India has seen a blossoming of uh, Hindutva and the majority chauvinistic, uh, chauvinist ideological and political offense, uh, what you can say, a political offensive which can only be classified as extremist in relation to the national unity. So at this juncture, uh, Dr. Ambedkar's fearless analysis of the caste system of Chatur Varnia, rigid social hierarchy and implications of hegemony of Shastras must be read and again Reread about uh, reread, so his major exposition of such questions uh, is largely contained in the best book, which I would like uh, uh, to mention again. That is annihilation of the past. So this uh, I would uh, end my lecture with this uh, point, and uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And thank you once again to all uh, for actually uh, you know giving me chance and uh, begging me for such a long time. Thank you so much.